second part, electrical circuit. Okay, in a circuit, you have a voltage, which is your battery, and there will be a current going through it, which is the amp and your resistor. So this is a, these three component is required in a circuit. It's made up, uh, it's what made up a complete circuit. Okay, electricity travel in a closed loop or circuit. So it's, if a circuit is open, means there's an open space, or if there's a switch, the switch is not making the circuit complete in a loop, then electricity cannot flow or it cannot run. So for example, if you have a loop here and there's a hole here, this means you will not be able to light up anything or the current is not going around the circuit. So this will, uh, this is what we will find in your house. If you are to switch on or switch off the light, you are actually, you are actually uh, making the circuit on and off. So in your house, there's switch. If you are to flip it, then you, you are actually disconnecting the circuit. You are making it incomplete. So that's what it means by open circuit. Means the circuit is not complete because there's no closed loop or a circuit, so to say, for the electric current to flow through and loop around. So a closed circuit is when there's a electric, uh, is is a circuit that is going all around all your component and it's going back to the supply. Means there's no disconnection of the wiring. So you find that if there's lightning and there's rain in your area, and if there's lightning, then your switch will be off because there's a protection to it. So this is the idea behind electric circuit. Lah. There's an open circuit and there's a closed circuit. Okay, moving on. So this is the Kirchhoff law. So this is the most important this is a very important law. Okay, it says that current going into a junction is equal to the sum of current flowing out from the node or vice versa. It, so if you see in this diagram, you the law basically says that the current which is flowing in this, if it's to branch out into two different directions, they are actually the cumulative of the first one. Okay, next one. The second law says that the sum of voltage across a closed loop equals to zero. What this means that this battery has a six volt. So there's a drop in here, here, and here. All this drop will actually equals to this battery cap capacity. So the it writes here the EMF is equals to six volt. And this one V1, there's a one voltage drop at here. And then there's a three voltage drop at here. And there's a two voltage drop at here. So Kirchhoff law says that the sum of all the voltage in a closed loop is equals to zero. So this is a uh, Another law to memorize. Okay, next is a series connection. So what is a series connection? If you look at the picture here, if you have component in a straight line, which is connected like this, this is called a series connection. So in a series connection, current has only one path to flow. So the current is the same at any point of the circuit. If you are to refer back to the Kirchhoff law number one, so this is the Kirchhoff law number one. It says that the sum of all the current is the same at this point, which means if you to branch out here or here, it's equals to the straight line. Okay, and then okay. 
current flowing in each resistor have the same value. So because the resistor is the same value, and uh, then you'll find that the voltage is the same value if the resistance is the same value. <clears throat> so this is the case if you have a series circuit. You have to remember that current flows in the same uh, cur the current is the same across a series connection. If you are given that the R1, R2, R3 is the same, then your voltage drop across V1, V2, and V3 is also the same. Okay, so this is a uh, example eight. So this is a circuit in series. You have one, two, and three resistor in series, and you are given a voltage of 35 volt. So you have to find out what is the total resistance, what is the current in the circuit, and then what is the voltage drop across R2. So applying back the Kirchhoff law, it says that the total resistance is in a series in a series is a cumulative effect. So to answer the first part A, the total resistance, R1, R2, R3 is just a cumulative. You just add them together to make it into one single resistance. And then to find the current of the circuit, you have to just divide it, the total resistance using the V equals to I R. So you move the formula around, you have I equals to V over R. Then you will be able to get the current. And then for the voltage drop across R2, then you have to uh, do the differentiation of it. Okay, let's go to the answer. Okay, so as I said before, for the total resistance, you are just to add it together and then to find the current, you are just to use it, use the V equals to IR. So you know that 35 is your battery supply and 140 is your resistance. So you get a 0 0.25 amp. So to find the volt, uh, voltage drop at, at R2, to find the voltage drop at R2, you are to use V equals to IR. So V, you know that your current is 0 0.25 because your current is the same across all the circuit. And you know that your resistance is R2. So 0 0.25 multiplied by 50 ohm, you get 12.5 volt. So your drop here is 12.5 volt. If you are to do it for R1, it will also be the same. You have to multiply the current with the resistance. The same with R3. If you are to find out what is the voltage drop at R1, R2, and R3, you have to work it out. If you were to work all of this R1, R2, and R3 out, you'll find that the law will apply back, the Kirchhoff law will apply where the resistance drop across all the resistance is equals to the supply, which is back, uh, they will equals back to the supply. So this is the second Kirchhoff law. Okay. So the next is parallel. So in circuit calculation, you will have two difference that you have to take note of, which is series circuit and parallel circuit. So in parallel circuit, you have your if you look at here, you you have different you have resistance in a configuration such as like this. So you have an input from here and you have an input from here. Uh, input at V1 and output at here V V1. So you have a configuration like this. This is so called a parallel circuit. <clears throat> So what does it say? The current flowing in the circuit is equal to the sum of current in each resistor. So your current is equal to I1, I2, and I3. 
So this is your first Kirchhoff law. It says that the current here is, for example, a uh, one, and then when it branch out to I one, I two, and I three, the total amount of this is equals to the previous amount of your current. Hence, the I, which is here, is equal to I one, I two, and I three. So your I is your current. So this is your Kirchhoff first law. Okay, next is the uh, voltage in each resistor are the same. So this is a uh, second part you need to take note of. Because uh, you need to take note of lah. And then the third is the uh, resistance. So uh, the resistance is calculated in such a way to find the total resistance. So it doesn't matter if you have how many R. For example, in this case there's R1, R2, R3. And even R4 and R5, if there's subsequent more, you are to still use this formula. So this one over R, this is your total resistance. If you are to find out what is the total resistance here. So uh doesn't matter if there's three, four, or five, you just continue have R1, R2, R3, and more. Lah. So you can have a lot of uh resistant here as opposed to here so this is fixed already lah. this one is fixed this also is fixed okay so do take note that all of them are one over r so once you have solved it you will need to flip it around you need to play around with the mess a bit and then you'll be able to get the resistance so uh this one there's no choice you will have to memorize it you have to remember it or you once you have practiced enough time, then you always remember that in series, the resistance is add together and in parallel, when you are dealing with the resistance, you have to apply this formula. So uh, n is the number of subsequent, no matter how many you got, is an n number. And then you have to remember in a series connection, you have to link back to your Kirchhoff law. Kirchhoff law in a series is here, is current is the same, but when it's branched out, the current in a series is equals to the cumulative current in the parallel part. Okay, and then one thing different is in a series, the voltage drop is equals to zero back. Means how many supply is equals to how many, uh, how many drop across each of the resistor. And then for parallel, all of them have the same drop, voltage drop. Because you have to combine them into one, and then this one combination, all of them have the same drop. Okay, so let's go for the example nine. By referring to the circuit below, you have to calculate the total resistance, total current, and the current value in each resistor. So for a parallel, you're not finding the voltage drop across the resistance because you know that based on the law the voltage drop across the resistance 1, 2 and 3 is the same but the current is different due to the Kirchhoff law the law in effect that's why you are to find out what is the current at R1, R2 and R3 okay so for A you are to use the formula which is 1 over R this is your total total current and then 1 over R1 1 over R2 and 1 over R3 because in this case there's three resistor you have three of this R1 R2 and R3 if there's four or five you just plus 1 over R4 or and plus 1 over R5 so you plug in the value and then you end up with 1 over R equals to 20 divided by 6. So this is not the end. You have to flip them around and you'll get R equals to 3 ohm. So this here is your total resistance. And then in B, it's asking you to find the total current. So you know that you have found out your total resistance. And then you use the basic 
Ohm's formula, which is V equals to IR. You move them around and you find that your current is 2M. And then next is you have to find the current drop in each of the resistor. So you know that your current is 2M. Then you use you have to use the still the same law V equals to IR, but now you have to you you know your resistor you know your resistance, so you have to put in the value in it uh, for 30 and 20. So you find that the voltage drop across 1, 2, and 3 is this value. So if you remember back to your Kirchhoff law, it says that the total current in a knot is equals to 0, which means that from left, if there's a series, only one line coming in, there's 2M. And then from the right, there's a parallel connection, which has three lines coming in. They are to add up to become 0, which means left is 2M. And then right, they can be 1.5, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. If you are to add them together at the at the intersection point, they are 0, which means they are equals to each other. Okay, so uh, hope you guys understand. Let me go through. Let me. So this is, I think this uh this is all the calculation for this top for this electrical circuit. So please practice. Okay, so uh I think I go for, I I go for I finish up this electrical generation and transmission and distribution and then uh, we will call it a day for today lah. then we'll continue the rest uh, next week so okay let's continue transmission and distribution refer to the different stages of electricity over poles and wires from generator to a home or business the primary distinction between the two is the voltage level at which electricity move in each stages so in the morning i say that electricity is very versatile which you can use it but it needs to come from somewhere so the place that we generate electricity is a very remote space uh, it's a very remote area so to from this remote area to our residential area it actually covers a very very long Distant. To efficiently distribute this electricity, one of the way is we are actually using a transformer, a step up to step up the voltage for transmission. So why do we want to step up the voltage? If you are to relate it back to your formula, which is V equals to IR, when you are actually increasing the voltage you can actually reduce the cable size because when you are trans transferring the voltage over long distance you will find that energy will be lost across the transmission due to the long distance due to the heat generated so in order to have a higher efficiency we are actually uh, what is being done is actually increasing the voltage when the voltage is high then you have a low current so if you apply if you think back on the formula v equals to ir if your voltage is very very high then your current can be reduces can be reduced then with the low current you will not be losing a lot of energy at the resistor so that's why you want to increase the voltage to to carry uh, to carry the electricity. So it, increasing the voltage is more efficient rather than just uh, using the voltage at as it is, because using the voltage at is it, uh, as it is, if you are to transfer it over a long distance, then you'll be actually losing the energy. 
and if you are to use just the uh, and just the voltage that we have here to transfer you'll find that to in order to efficiently transfer most of it you have to increase the size of your cable which is not very efficient due to to do maintenance or to transfer lah, or to build it because we want to have to save our cost and to build a smaller cable that's why with this formula in mind we are playing around with the voltage so higher voltage uh, will contribute to a lower current with a lower current there will not be a lot of resistance to the conductor okay next so this is a picture on how the electricity get to your home you have a uh, number one which is your electric city generation at a power plant which is this one will be very very far away in the rainforest and out of the city and then you have the step up transformer station so this will cause the electricity to have a very high voltage and a very low current and then you have to transfer it along the cable line if you see on the highway along the cable tower and then into the city and then before it enters our house before it enters the taman there will be a step down transformer so once the voltage is dropped down and then you can transfer the electricity into our home okay <clears throat> so how electricity get to your home a complete power system is a collection of equipment and cable capable of producing electricity so energy and transferring it to places where it can be used so the three main components of a power system are generation transmission and distribution so distribution is to all us consumer the mb make the electricity and then they are to transfer it uh, over a very very long distance and then they are to distribute it to us consumer to use the electricity either on our laptop or in our fridge so the the energy stock in the use of electricity is very versatile okay so electric generation so electricity is generated in the electric power station by converting mechanical energy into electrical energy so you are actually connecting uh, converting the mechanical energy which is kinetic energy and then we have to make it into electricity using a uh, magnetic electromagnetic field <clears throat> so in a power station the magnet in each generator are turned by engine usually steam turbine called prime mover so this mechanical energy uh, the energy inputted into here can come from a lot of sources either from steam either from water either from movement so all of these are what drive the motor and then through the driving of the motor you are to actually drive another component which is the electric uh, magnetic component so with this magnetic component you'll be able to get electricity and then the electricity is actually stored into the battery or transfer through a line to a station okay so this one is continuing is how the process and then in malaysia we are to we are commonly we use thermal power station or combined cycle power station which is coal natural gas and water so we use water a lot because our country is rich in river <clears throat> okay so uh, in Malaysia our power generator is in AC and the voltage is around 11 kilowatts or 25 kilowatts okay so this is a picture on how electric is generated you have uh, here 
which is a refrigerant cycle. So you're moving it around here and here. And then this is output towards uh, the consumer. Okay, where the resources is coming in is here, the natural gas feed. So the natural gas feed is coming into here, is feeding into this gas turbine. And then the gas turbine is being powered up by this natural gas feed. So with this gas turbine being powered up, the generator will be running. So this generator will be converting the power from this gas turbine into electricity. So uh, this is the same for the steam turbine. It's using the steam to power up the machine and to uh, power the generator to convert the electricity to convert into electricity. <clears throat> okay, so uh, as previous, the slide says, there's a few way to generate electricity, which is by natural gas or steam turbine or by coal. So coal is not shown here, but this is basically how a gas turbine works and then a steam turbine works. Okay, electrical transmission. <clears throat> so these steps is what I have explained just now. Okay, the voltage increase is necessary to reduce the cable size required during transmission. So I've explained that with a higher voltage, there will be lower current, and then this will contribute to lower resistance loss in the conductor. Okay. And then this is how they are configured because it's a very high voltage, they are to use pylon tower, and then all of them are suspended overhead. Okay, what is the advantage of a national grid? You have large power station with low operating costs, and then our the sudden local demand for power can be supplied by a number of power stations. Then the effect of breakdown in generating plant and transmission line can be minimized. So you have a period of low demand can be supplied with plant with lowest operation cost. So national grid, what it means by national grid means that you have a few generator running to supply the power to an area. So you are able to make very large power station with low operating cost. And then by studying the consumer's usage of electricity, you are actually able to arrange which power plant to be on and off. And if there's breakdown, you do not have to worry because you have you are you have a few plant generating the power to the consumer. So there's also disadvantage to it. The disadvantage is you cannot keep all the, you cannot, it's very difficult to make sure that all the generator, they are working at the same frequency. So you actually have to make sure that each, each generator, doesn't matter they are steam, they are natural gas, they are coal. You want to make sure that they are actually uh, outputting the same frequency, same voltage to the consumer. So you do not want to have suddenly in the morning, you have a very low voltage power. And then in the afternoon, you have a high voltage power. The voltage power supplied to us has to be a constant, a constant value. This is so that all our electric equipment, they do not get burned out or short circuit. Because if you have a fluctuating Voltage up and down is actually very bad for our equipment because as we work more as as we our our equipment actually requires a constant stream of power depending on the usage. So if you have to go up and down, then you're actually providing unnecessary power to the equipment, which is very bad. Okay, so the next is long transmission line have financial and environmental impact. Then long transmission line with energy. 
So that's why you want to have a high voltage instead of a normal voltage. And then surplus heat from large isolated thermal power station is usually wasted. So whatever we do, there will be wastage of electricity from generating useless heat. So we are actually unable to utilize every energy that we waste. That's why there's this disadvantage of the surplus heat generated. Okay, so this is another diagram of the electricity supply. Okay, electricity distribution. So this is this page, this slides show the value of the voltage transmission, which is at 132 kilovolts, 275 kilovolts, or 400 kilowatts. All of these are generated by the power plant. And then before it's given to us, we have to, uh, the voltage is actually dropped down <coughs> to 33 and 11 kilovolts. And then from the 30, 33 kilovolts to 11 kilovolts, you have to drop it further down to 415 or 240 volts before it is given to us to use. <coughs> so this voltage distribution is done underground or overhead. So depending on where you live, <coughs> you'll find that your voltage or your all your utilities cable, they are mostly underground uh, to make sure to look nicer. So you'll find that all your utilities cable are underground in Malaysia. Uh, this depends on the country. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I guess this is it for 